states in Maryland, you can see that they have an open agenda. They admit that uh, they're actually attempting to transform the Christian West into something different. And these uh, organizations, you, you have to watch them because they're working in cohoots with you know, your local churches. Uh, they're working with the government to bring in exactly the wrong kind of people. I, I would agree with you. Thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. Listen, Michael's been talking about this big time. I, I listen to his show. He's been talking about this big time, how the church makes loads of money off of this refugee resettlement deal. And the churches that we're talking about, may I just say this? They are, they are they're mainstream liberal churches. They're not the conservative evangelical Christians. Uh, Christian churches. They're the mainstream liberal churches that are making loads of cash off this. Again, not the evangelical conservative churches. So there's a lot of money to be made. But if you all, okay, think of the president, think of who this guy is, and how he just wants to get back. This is all about getting back and getting even. White America isn't something that excites him. In fact, I think it disturbs him greatly. This is a guy who, of course, well, we all know his background. But he sees uh, white Europeans as the problem. So look at where these refugees are being resettled, oftentimes in all-white communities. This is a way to disturb that, um, that population setting. That's, that's exactly what he's doing. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. I'm not being xenophobic. I'm not being racist. I'm just telling you the truth. This is what this is exactly what they're doing. How does Islam spread? I mean, just looking at the situation here in the world today and since the 600s. We're going to talk about that briefly in a nutshell. Take more of your calls. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage here on the Savage Nation. President Obama was out there speechifying today with the Pope. Pope's about to have his uh, first big mass. Uh, I guess he's doing a little change of costumes or something like that. He was riding in the Pope Mobile. He got out of the Fiat, got in the Pope Mobile, which is a uh, Jeep, and now he's gone to a basilica. And I guess he's getting the new outfit on so he can do the, ma- uh, the, the mass. Obama was out there talking about, uh, you know, how. We all need to lift up the poor and the marginalized and show mercy. Craig is calling from Alabama. Craig, thanks for joining us on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, basically, there's a, a part in that speech that Obama was giving out about when the Pope showed up and everything. And he basically was saying that the greatest message in the Bible that was told was about mercy. Well, mercy is a good and it's a powerful message, but the most powerful message in the Bible, if he wants to be clear on what he's going to say, he needs to go ahead and just say that the most powerful message in the Bible is when Jesus Christ came and he died for us, for our sins, so that we can be forgiven and that we can have eternal life if we accept him, which is, you know, salvation. So I just wanted to make that clear, that that would be the greatest message in the Bible if he was going to make that comment. Yeah, and the, and the mercy that uh, one receives in the Bible is the mercy that God has for us as sinners. Uh, he provides us a way to eternal life, correct? That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 that is what I'm talking about. But yeah, and see, Obama doesn't to... get that because he doesn't believe it, even though he's told us that he's been a Christian all his life. Exactly. Appreciate your calling out of Alabama. So how does Islam spread? No, seriously, how? just looking at history, this is not meant to be partisan or or xenophobic, or anything of the sort. But let's talk about Egypt. Egypt was a Christian nation before it became a Muslim nation. How did that happen? It happened through violence in the 600s. Uh, The Muslims conquered all of Egypt and turned turned it into an Egyptian colony, and you had two choices. Convert or die. Or maybe be kept around as a second-class citizen. Or if you were really lucky, escape. But where would you escape to? Same thing, Persia, which is now Iran. I mean, 
That was not a Muslim country. But how was it conquered? By way of Muslim Arabs who were absolute barbarians. That's how it was conquered. Uh, you can go to Indonesia. How did that become the most populous Muslim country? For thousands of years, it was a Hindu Buddhist kingdom. But slowly, the Hindu Buddhist kingdom saw more, 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 more Muslims, 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 and voila. What's going on in uh, countries nearby where Muslims are the minority? Well, in Buddhist nations, what happens? The Buddhists suffer violence at the hands of the Muslims. Look at Thailand. Look what's going on there. It's just terrible to see what's happening in these nations. So I'm just telling you, folks, uh, Lebanon. Lebanon's another case in point. I mean, during the French mandate, Lebanon was protected against uh, destabilizing Muslim intervention. But as soon as the French mandate came to an end, Lebanon was at the mercy of external and internal forces, and uh, Islam became the law of the land. That's what happened, folks. That's what happened. And so now you get a lady in New Jersey at a meeting where the school district says, no, we're not going to have a special holiday for you. And the lady in New Jersey says this, guys, if you have it, please play it. This is chilling. This is the lady in New Jersey, the Muslim lady threatening all of us. We're no longer the minority. That's clear from tonight. We're going to be the majority soon. That's, folks, this is what is happening. So if you want to, the, the Pope is having church in Washington, D.C. I'm saying this is the church of what's happening right now. We need to wake up, folks, because our nation is in a serious, serious situation. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Don't forget the website, michaelsavage.com. Very simple. Borders, language, culture. That's the home of The Savage Nation. And there is where you can pre-order Michael Savage's upcoming blockbuster. It's entitled Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Plus, you can get all the news of the day. And I highly encourage you to sign up for Savage's email newsletter. comes out several times a week. You get caught up on all the latest. Okay, here's the latest. By the way, guys uh, producing the show, we got Robert, Jim behind the scenes, two good guys. But i got to tell you, I actually have a third producer because I do this morning show in San Francisco at KSFO, Michael Savage's flagship station, and uh, my sidekick, my cohort, the hilarious young and beautiful Katie Green, is uh, working heartily behind the scenes, <laughs> feeding me with all sorts of great stuff as well. So, guys, I have three producers today, okay? I'm one-upping Michael Savage. I've got three producers. But uh, this is interesting. This is from Katie. She brings me something here involving Joe Biden. See, Hillary's in a lot of trouble, folks. This email thing, she can run, but she can't hide. And all those deleted emails, well, we found out today, of course, that uh, they're not deleted. Listen, I, I live and work in the Silicon Valley. I've had many Silicon Valley types tell me, there's no way, come on now, they, the FBI could work just as hard as any private company would to secure all those supposedly deleted emails. Uh, they're getting them, and it's not looking good for Hillary. Now, here's my question. When she testifies next month before Congress, will she be under oath or not? Because the last time, remember when she said, what difference does it make when she did that squawking? Routine uh, with the Coke bottle lenses on. Remember that? Green outfit, Coke bottle lenses. What difference does it make? Uh, she wasn't under oath then. Are these guys in Congress going to have the cojones to put her under oath? That's what I want to know. So, Katie, thanks for that share. A couple other things from the Golden... Oh, here's, here's what she shared with me. No, this, this is where I'm going. Hollywood is rallying around Joe Biden. They want him to run. And you've got some big bundlers. This is coming out of the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, you've got the United, Talent, the United Talent Agency managing partner coming forward saying, I'm in. 
and others who are saying, we're in, run, Joe, run. To which I say, run, Joe, run. You're the gaff machine, open mouth, insert floor shine, it'll be beautiful. And, you know, I would love to see any of those Republican candidates um, debate. Well, any, I'd like to see, I would love to see, oh, can you imagine Trump debating Hillary? He'd go for the juggler. Joe Biden, juggler. Uh, ben Carson would absolutely be able to befuddle them with his great intellect. Even Carly Fiorina and Hillary. Oh, my God, what a cat fight that would be. That would be fantastic. Ted Cruz would take all of them apart. He's such a great debater. California, did you hear about this? Most of you don't live in California. I do. Uh, in, in 2004, they said, well, you know, we've got a problem here because uh, these kids are graduating high school, but they're really not uh, qualified to graduate high school. Yeah, they pass all their courses, but they're dumb as a rock when it comes to math and English, and they get into our four-year schools, and they've got to take all these remedial classes, and it sucks. What can we do about it? Hey, let's start a high school exam. So in California, they started a high school exit exam. Good idea. I don't know if you've got these in your states, but we have it here. Um, so the idea was with this exit exam in California, all you have to do is pass 55% of the questions to succeed in this test. And basically you're being tested on eighth grade math and ninth grade English. And if you can pat, if you can get 55% correct, eighth grade math, ninth grade English, and then pass all your courses, you can graduate. But the problem is, hundreds of thousands of kids, since this test was instituted in 2004, didn't pass, so they couldn't get their diploma. They're dumb as rocks when it comes to academics, couldn't get their diploma because they couldn't pass the exit exam. So what did the people in Sacramento do last week? Well, let's get rid of the exit exam. This isn't fair. And let's do it retroactively. So 250,000 kids who couldn't get their diploma now get their diplomas retroactively. So that's one thing going on here in California. One more for you. Uh, California now making it easier for people to vote. So we are going to have automatic voter registration. So anytime you get a driver's license or a state ID card, it's not motor voter where you get a form. It's you're automatically registered to vote. Automatically. And what they want is... They want it automatically. Anytime you fill out any government form in the state of California, you'll be automatically registered to vote. And given the fact that the person on the other side of the counter is a unionized Democrat, you'll be encouraged to register Democrat. Uh, And what they want to do is they want to start pre-registering 16-year-olds to vote in California. That's that story. And then one more for you. One more for you, just how dumb my state is. Uh, We've spent $16 million to count fish in the ocean. Uh, For the last 20 years, they've been closing off portions of the Pacific to fishing. So right now, 16% of the California coast is off limits to fishing. They say, well, we want to replenish the fish supplies. Okay, fine. So because you're not fishing in those waters, one would naturally think, I guess the the fish populations are increasing, right? So we've spent $16 million to see if the fish population is increasing. And even after spending $16 million, these idiots who are making the count still can't tell us if the fish are increasing or not. That's how we spend money out here in California, folks. Now we go to the lines. On the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. A lot of great callers. Okay, we've been talking about Islam. I just gave you a few minutes ago the history of the world of Islam and how nations like Egypt and Iran and Lebanon and Indonesia became Muslim countries. Let's continue that discussion. Stephen WJR, you are on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Hi, Brian. like the show so far. It's going well. Um, my question, or I guess my point was, you were pointing out how countries had been overtaken by Muslims through violence, or Islam through violence. And I guess my question back to you would be, how do you think those countries initially became Christian? Uh, Egypt certainly wasn't a Christian nation before Rome took it over. America was not a Christian nation before Europe took it over through violence and imposed Christianity. So all we're seeing... Well, okay, and now hold on. I, uh, listen, but we were talking about how Islam spread, and, and so I'll cut you off right there. In terms of the United States of America, it was not, um, it was not Christians conducting violence here. 
uh, if you know your history of America, there were two Americas, essentially. 